Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to day two BEA book haul. Um, if you missed my day one video, I'll link it down below. Uh, this video I'm going to talk about all the books that I got at BEA 2016 day two and I will warn you right now it is not as many as I got for day one so this will hopefully be a little bit of a shorter video. And what is going on with my hair? We'll just roll with that. Okay, so the first stack of books that I'm going to be talking about are all the books that I got signed at BEA Day 2. Day 2 was different in the fact that I feel like it was actually BEA Day 1 since it only started at 1 o'clock. Um, I feel like a lot of the stuff, a lot of the booths weren't really having all the big stuff yet. And so Day 2, it opens like 9 a.m., everybody comes in, there's authors everywhere, there's signings, there's arc drops, all this crazy stuff. So that's what I'm going to show you now, the books that I got signed at BEA Day 2. The first book, well not the first book, I don't know, I don't remember what order I got them in, but the first one I'm going to show you is called Wonder Women by Sam Max. Uh, this comes from Quirk Books and I got it because Emily Blue Eye Biblio said that she read it and she loved it and she loved Sam Max, she wanted to meet her, so we met her and we got her book signed. And this one is about the 25 innovators, inventors, and trailblazers who changed history and it's all about women so I'm super excited to read it. Another book that I got signed at BEA Day 2 is History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Uh, we waited in a pretty long line for this book and I haven't read Adam's first book but I've heard great things about it and so I was excited to get this and to meet him. He was so fun and cool and down to earth and this one is about, what is this about? I feel like I should have done this ahead of time and I might have. When Theo drowned, Griffin's heart shattered. Oh, so one person drowns, the other person deals with the aftermath of the drowning and the relationship and all this crazy stuff. So it's a tearjerker. Yes! Another book that I got signed at BEA Day 2 is the first in a new middle grade series by Lisa McMahon. Um, it's called Going Wild. Um, I really don't know much about this. I had a ticket to get, or no, I didn't have a ticket. This is a non-ticketed one. I was like, I want to meet Lisa McMahon again because I've met her once before. But what did they pitch this as? Uh, where is it at? Somebody pitched it as like, it's got to be on here. Where did I see this? I might be imagining this, but I'm pretty sure somebody pitched this as like, Animorphs meets something else. And I was like, Animorphs? If this is anything like Animorphs, I need it in my life. Another signed book that I got, BEA Day 2. This is a book that me and Emily Blue Eye Biblio both got. Uh, we were back by the ticketed signings and this was a non-ticketed signing. One of the publicists or somebody who works for the publishing company for this book was just standing up um, holding up a copy at the end of the line because there was no line to get this book signed or like few people in the line. Like you should get it signed is what it was. So what drew us is the cover. This cover is so adorable. And so we walked up to the lady and we are like, can we see what this is about? And she's like, oh, well, I'll give you a pitch. So she gave us a pitch and it's like this kid, Matteo, um, some raccoons or skunks or something steal his bike and he goes on a mission to find them and protect the rest of the neighborhood. And it sounds super adorable. It's obviously middle grade, but this cover just drew us to it. So we both got it and we got it signed and that was pretty cool. The next book is for an author that um, I read her books when I was younger and I remember I still have a couple of them on my shelf somewhere. Um, it's for Anne M. Martin. If you don't know her, she did The Babysitter's Club. But she was there signing a new book, Miss Piggly, Piggle Wiggle and the Whatever Cure. No idea what it's about. I was just really excited to meet Anne Martin. So she signed my Kindle for me or my Nook. She signed something for me. And then she signed this book and I'll either read it or I'll pass it along to someone that I know will read it. This next book is a book called The Secret Keepers by Trenton Lee Stewart. They actually were dropping arcs of it on BEA Day 1 and then BEA Day 2 he was in the back at the authoring line setup stage thing and he was signing copies of these so I got mine signed. Um, this is supposed to be very good. Uh, this author wrote the best-selling Mysterious Benedict Society series, which I have not heard of, but it's best-selling, which means it's got to be at least a little bit good. And I guess this is a new novel from him, and people have been waiting for one for a really long time. And it's, like, pretty thick, sounds interesting, um, so I'll probably give it a read. 
The next book that I got from BEA Day 2 I actually got from an ARC drop and it is The Edge of Everything by Jeff Giles. This is in with the signed stuff because BEA Day 3 he was signing them and I brought mine with me so I could get it signed and not take a new one. What drew me to this was the cover. I've never seen like white on white for title font on actual cover of the book and it sounds pretty interesting and I do know that, where's that? Um, Brittany from the Book Addicts Guide has a little blurb in here, so that's pretty exciting, Which so it obviously means that people I know have read this and I've liked it, and so I'm now looking forward to reading it. Next book is kind of a book, this is like the one book that I got BEA Day 2 that I'm not sure that I'll actually read, and it is more of an adult fiction, historical fiction one, it is called The Hamilton Affair by Elizabeth Cobbs. Um, we saw this in the little fancy paper. Um, oh, I didn't tell you about the paper. Do I have one of the papers? I might have one of the papers. I have one of the papers. Okay, they have these, this little stop in my book haul. They have these every single day, day one, day two, day three. And it basically kind of showed what was gonna be on the floors and everything each day. So this is what we went off of when we were finding our books. Back to the Hamilton affair, um, Mara, Book Marauder, saw this listed in the little newspaper thing for the daily stuff that they're gonna have at BEA. She's like, oh my god, we have to have it. And around the time that they were dropping them, we got separated, I think. And so I was walking by the booth that had these, which was uh, Skyhorse. And um, I thought to myself, I was like, I don't necessarily really want one, but I don't know if Mara got one. So I pretty much grabbed this just in case she didn't get it and she did get hers, I think. Um, but this is one that I might read and I might gift it to somebody like a history teacher that I know it'll be applicable to their daily lives. But I do like history, so and obviously Hamilton is super relevant right now, so I might give it a try. Another book that I have in my signed pile um, for BEA Day 2, I didn't get signed until BEA Day 3, but I did get Stealing Snow by Danielle Page from the Bloomsbury Arc Drop on BEA Day 2. I'm a little nervous for this one because I wasn't the biggest Danielle Page fan, um, but I do love fairy tale retelling, so I'm willing to give it a try, and I really, really hope that I like it as much as I hope that I will. That didn't make any sense at all. I hope I like it as much as I hope I will. Okay. The last book that I got signed BEA Day 2 is actually one that's in a fancy box. It is Replica by Lauren Oliver and it comes in a box which is super cool. Um, you hear Velcro. How do I get it out? Okay. So Replica is pretty cool. The box kind of destroyed it a little bit but it's, to be completely honest, don't know exactly what it's about. All I know is it's got two point of views and it's like reversible. It's not reversible but you know what I mean. Um, Lyra and Gemma and you can read the story one way and flip it and read it the other and then they cross over in the middle so that in itself is like such a gripping hook for me I'm always looking for some new like storytelling manner um, in any book that I read and so I had to have this one and we got it we got it signed by Lauren and we were waiting in her line and we were creeping on her because she was across the little aisle in the booth and she came over and she asked us to take a selfie with her and she put it on Twitter and that was super, super awesome. One more thing that I did get signed at BEA Day 2 was a sampler of Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Um, it came with some tattoos, which is pretty exciting. I'm not the biggest fan of samplers because they like leave you wanting more. Um, so I'll probably read this or give it away. Not quite sure, but it was awesome seeing Lee again because she's so freaking amazing. So now we're done with the books that are signed from BEA Day 2, and we're gonna go on to the rest of my haul, which is 13 more books and this sampler. I was able to get my hands on a sampler for Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Um, this is pretty anticipated because they're not doing, I don't think they're doing arcs of this. And so they were handing out samplers and fancy bags with pins and stuff and I was able to snag one and I'm really excited because this sampler is like 70 pages long or something like it's unheard of for a sampler so this will be a fun one to read. The next book is The Bombs That Brought Us Together by Brian Conaghan. What drew me in for this one was the cover because there's like a bomb in the title and I love it when they illustrate it like that and then also I think as Blue Eyed Biblio Emily mentioned in her video 
The fact that there were two guys on the cover kind of made me hope that it was going to be like LGBT. But what drew me to this also was on the back it says, how far would you go to save the people that you love? So it sounds like it's going to be a really powerful story and I'm super glad that I grabbed it. The next book is Love and First Sight by John Sundquist. Um, he is the author of We Should Hang Out Sometime, which I have not read yet. Um, this book, I don't know exactly why I grabbed it except for the fact that it was there, but I'm kind of excited to read it and kind of nervous because the way that it sounds like it goes is it's about a blind kid who has this girlfriend and everybody tells her that she's gorgeous and all this stuff and then somehow he miraculously gets his sight and he finds out that she wasn't as conventionally beautiful as everybody told him she was and so it sounds like it could be really controversial and it reminds me of the movie Shallow Hal and then I know as Emily pointed out it kind of sucks if they're gonna like give him this disability and then automatically cure him of it and make him better. So I don't know, it sounds like it could be a controversial read and I hope that it's, I hope it's good. I don't know, we'll see. This next book is, I'm pretty sure it's an adult book. It is called Two Days Gone by Randall Silvis. Um, I grabbed this because it looked very ominous and as I was reading the back of it, it does sound very ominous. It goes, the perfect family, the perfect house, the perfect life, all gone now. What could cause a man when all the stars of fortune are shining upon him to suddenly snap and destroy everything he has built? This sounds really good and then at the very end it says, two days gone is a top suspenseful story that will break your heart as much as it will haunt your dreams. And that's pretty much what I'm looking for in a book. It's got to break my heart. And at the same time, it's gonna haunt my dreams. This next book is from Candlewick Press. It is called It Looks Like This by Rafi Mitlefeld. I did not say that right and I apologize. I know I said that wrong. The reason that I picked this up was the cover. I haven't heard anything about this book, good or bad. And so I really think I am going to go into it blind and not seek anything out. It's a debut, so I'm kind of excited for it. And I'm also nervous, but it's gonna be good. I really hope. This next one is also from Candlewick Press. It is called The Light Fantastic by Sarah Coombs. Um, the cover, again, drew me into this. Candlewick apparently has awesome covers. I don't know, but um, cover drew you in, you look at the back and you get drawn in even more. Seven tightly interwoven narratives, three harrowing hours, one fateful day that changes everything. And then it continues more, I'm not gonna read it all, but it says The Light Fantastic is a tense, shocking, and beautifully raw exploration of the pain and pathos of a generation of teenagers on the brink and the hope of moving from shame and isolation into the light of redemption. So this sounds pretty sweet. And I'm super, super glad that I snatched it up when I saw it. The next book I picked up from Abrams and it is a finished copy of The Haters by Jesse Andrews. He is author of Me, er Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. I always forget one of those ands. I read his first book, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, um, but I have heard good things about The Haters. So I'm really looking forward to read it and I was super surprised they had finished hardcover copies of them. So obviously that's like a must grab if you're even remotely interested in it. This next book is called The Graces by... Where's the name? Oh, there, Laura, Laura Eve. The only reason that I knew about this book was because Book Marauder, Mara, she asked someone at the Abrams, right? Yes, at the Abrams booth about this book because Daphne um, from, I'm pretty sure Winged Reviews, I might have that wrong, but Daphne really, really wanted this. She couldn't come to BEA, so Mara told her she'd try to get it for her. And, um, the lady at the Abrams booth was really, really awesome and she went and grabbed us two copies of it from the back because they handed it out BEA day one. This sounds really good and I trust Mara and Daphne's opinion enough to know that if they want to read it, I should want to read it. Um, and the cover is just gorgeous and as they like to let you know with this little sticker in the bottom, right sold in over six languages and counting. So this sounds like it's going to be a big one. This next book is from Quirk. It is called Last Call at the Nightshade Lounge by Paul Kruger. Um, this is one that I think we picked up a sampler for a couple uh, Quirk books and the sampler was on the back and I think I got that BEA Day 1 and so I saw that they were going to have one of the two books at BEA Day 2. 
So I snatched it up and it sounds pretty interesting. Um, the back says demons are real, booze is magic, and a well-mixed cocktail is Chicago's only hope. So this one sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and at the same time being like really supernatural and witchy and I love witches. So I'm very excited to give this one a try. This next book is from Abrams as well. It is called Every Falling Star by Sung Yu Lee and Susan McClelland. I probably pronounced the first name wrong and I apologize for that. Um, this is actually, it's like historical fiction based on true story type stuff for young adult. On the back it says Every Falling Star, the first book to portray contemporary North Korea to a young audience is the memoir of Sung Yu Lee, a North Korean boy forced at the age of 12 to live on the streets and fend for himself. And it basically tells that tells his entire story, um, tells you about the stuff that we take for granted in the West and how he had to deal with it in North Korea. And so this sounds like a book that is really up my alley because I'm a sucker for history based on two stories, all of that kind of stuff. And so I'm very, very much looking forward to this one. The next book I have, I actually screwed up and this should have been in my signed pile of books. But I made a mistake. This is You Know Me Well by Nina LaCour and David Levathon. David was there, he was signing them. It was actually pretty cool because I this is a finished copy. And he said that this was the first time that he'd actually seen the finished copies was when he was signing them and giving them to us. It's It sounds great and Emily, I know Blue Eye Biblio, has already read it and she loved it and so very much looking forward to reading this one. And it's so pretty. <laughs> Next one is also from Abrams. I got a lot of books from Abrams on BEA Day 2, it seems like. It is called The Romantics by Leah Cohen. Um, the cover drew me to this, and then when I read what was on the cover, I realized I really needed to grab it. It says, a rom-com about love, told by love. So from what I gather, it's like um, that really popular book that was told from like Death's point of view or something. This is like a love story told from love's point of view. So this sounds pretty interesting to me. Um, I'm really hoping that it turns out to be as interesting and spectacular as I'm expecting it to be. Oh, I think my lighting changed. Did my lighting change? It kind of got sunny out there. I'm not sure though. I don't know the technology, even though I'm an engineer, it doesn't work. The next book was pretty anticipated from what I gather. It is called The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. Um, we waited in the Harper drop line for this and we were able to snag them. Um, it was pretty exciting. It's kind of, it's kind of, kind of sounds crazy. Um, from what I've gathered, Manhattan 2118 and it's like there's towers stretching to the sky. Like it's every futuristic thing that you've ever imagined that's not post-apocalyptic. Um, like pristine society, it must be like super, super tall towers that go to the thousandth floor. And a girl fell, apparently, according to the cover. Um, so it sounds like it's gonna be, what is it, let me see. I'll read you the about thing at the bottom. Debut author Catherine McGee has created a breathtakingly original series filled with high-tech luxury and futuristic glamour where the impossible feels just within reach, but in this world, the higher you go, the farther there is to fall. So it sounds pretty interesting. It's going to be a series, so we got another series to keep track of. But I am super excited to give this one a try. What does that say? Be the first, ooh, be the first to know their secrets is what that says. And then it's got a picture of the tower. See, I'm just finding out more about this as I go along. Okay, the last book that I got from BEA Day 2 is... The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. I had seen this before uh, because I follow Mindy on social media and I enjoyed her previous books that I've read and so I didn't really, I, like I wanted to get this, didn't know if I was going to be able to but we got it. Um, as we get it and we're looking at it, I am noticing things on the cover. I think Emily pointed it out first. It's got one, a vixen and it's a fox, two, a cow and it's an elephant, three, Jill and it's an otter. Uh, four, queen, and it's a cat. Five, it's a dog, and it's crossed out. So I'll tell you what that was supposed to be. That was supposed to be, like, rhymes with witch. Then that's awesome. And then the last one is a picture of a girl, and it says woman. So this sounds like a girl power book, and... Oh, but it's not, because you read the first sentence on the back, and it says Alex Kraft knows how to kill someone. 
So this is like some extreme girl power if it's a girl power book. Acclaimed author Mindy McGinnis artfully crafts three alternating perspectives into a dark and riveting exploration of what it means to be the female of the species. So this sounds amazing actually and I'm super super glad that BEA had it and that I grabbed it and I think Emily is reading it right now and I'm gonna need her to tell me how it is like ASAP so I know if I need to push it up on my TBR pile. So that is it for BEA day two book haul. It was, I just counted and I lost track already, 23 books. That was 23 books and two um, chapter samplers from other books. Day two was obviously where I got more interesting books I was actually going to read and I didn't take stuff that was shoved at me like on day one. Um, I actually actively seeked out the books and grabbed them as I actually wanted to read them. Tell me in the comments which of these books you are most looking forward to so that again I know which ones to hold giveaways for once I actually read them because uh, I do plan on giving away a lot of my BEA books because I don't normally keep ARCs on my shelf. So that was day two. There's one more day left and I have one more book haul and it's going to include day three and the couple books that I picked up at BookCon. So be sure to check back for that and I'm going to go eat some tacos.